Okay, so uh, welcome again to another live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Before we get going here, as always, <coughs> a quick review of the risk disclaimer. As we know, uh, trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk. And uh, most importantly, the views expressed here today are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of opinions held by Tickmill UK Limited or Tickmill Euro Limited. Before we jump into today's material, just a quick overview of, uh, of my background. I've been involved in financial markets uh, for 15 years now. Um, I wasn't always involved in, in financial markets after I graduated from university. I joined a city consulting firm and after a couple of years learning the ropes, left and did a startup. Uh, over a four to five year period, that business went through some pretty rapid growth and I, uh, I decided to cash in my stake and, uh, and to explore my passion really for markets. I'd had a front row seat to the um, dot-com boom and bust and, uh, and had seen people literally make and lose a fortune in the markets uh, at times overnight. Um, so I started what I refer to loosely as gambling or meddling in the markets uh, in 2000, late 2004 or 2005, uh, day trading the S&P 500 which at that stage was, um, was pretty much just trending to the upside. And I made some uh, initial gains uh, and then some quite significant gains. And, um, and I thought that, you know, this is too good to be true. It's, uh, it, I should have been doing this all along. But as is often the case, my beginner's luck uh, ran out and I, I gave back all the gains in a pretty uh, short period of time. And then I actually took a, a six figure hit on my personal capital. So it was that stage uh, that I decided I need to step back from what I was doing and assess the potential um, for me to either make money in the markets or to, or to, or to stop trading. Uh, so I sought out a mentor, um, someone to, who, who dis displayed excellence in the field of trading and, um, and worked with this guy for uh, 18 months to two years, not just upping my technical game, but more importantly, my mental game. It was a period during which I became uh, far more self-aware and made the important step of moving from being a goal-orientated individual, which, which is what I needed to be in my prior commercial experience, to actually becoming a process-orientated individual. And there's a very distinct difference there. Um, in trading, setting any type of um, near-term goals with respect to your gains in the market or your returns in terms of uh, financial returns is, uh, is really uh, is the wrong way to go about things. What you have to do in terms of being a professional trader is focus solely on process. Because if you have a process that has been um, solidly back tested and forward tested and you have a trading plan in place, then as long as you execute that plan, over an extended series of outcomes, you should see a positive return. Your edge should demonstrate itself in trading. And so uh, during that period, I developed and rigorously back tested a business plan, trading plan, and forward tested, and then came back to the markets in 2008 with my own capital. Obviously, a tumultuous year, not dissimilar, well, in some ways to, to the year we're going through at the moment, but. Um, I actually was able to ride out that year and at the end of the year have a positive return. The performance data you can see on the screens from 2013, that's because over that five year period from 2008 to 2013, um, friends and family saw what I was doing in the markets and they wanted a piece of the action. So I set up a, a managed accounts business, um, which has grown organically now. It's a, uh, a multi million dollar um, portfolio that I manage. And uh, the data is from when I started doing that service because I, I share that publicly for uh, potential investors. So um, the most important figures really for me down here are, are the ones down here in the bottom corner. Um, an average losing month, I, I give back or, or lose 2.32%. An average winning month, it's 796 So if you extrapolate that out, you can see that um, more often than not, I'm making two to three times what I lose. And that is an important metric for, for long-term success. Um, and just going back really to that process over outcome um, mantra that I have, you can see here that I, I have losing months, I have multiple losing months, but what I keep doing, and this is how you actually develop 
as a trader and, and develop a, a potential career is I just keep executing my strategy. I know that I, I, you know, I know that I can lose the next trade. I'm, I'm personally, I'm not emotionally invested at all in the outcome of the next trade or even the outcome of the next 10 trades. Where my focus lies is, the out, is, is over the next 100 trades, because I know that with a, a large enough sample size, my edge will demonstrate itself. And so that really is the, the key, for, from, from my perspective anyway, to, to making the change from being uh, sort of, you know, someone who's just dabbling or meddling in the markets. It's having that focus purely on process and letting the, the process and the execution of the process take care of the outcomes over time. So alongside uh, my trading, obviously, I'm a, uh, a market expert in residence at Tickmill, where I provide a daily market outlook and a chart of the day or a setup for the day ahead. You can access that through the, the Tickmill blog. You can even enter your email there and get those automatically sent to your inbox. Uh, the other project I'm involved in, which is a real passion project for me, is FX Career Swap, an online trading education firm where I'm the head of trading and trader education. And the, the business really is about developing retail trading talents and, um, and taking, taking traders through a, a process, a step-by-step -step process in terms of understanding the markets, then, then working with um, the strategies that I've used over the past uh, 12 years to successfully navigate the markets. Um, and then we actually, once you, you, you develop your business plan, your trading plan, we then actually fund you um, and, uh, and then you, you, you basically overcome what I deem to be one of the biggest challenges for retail traders, which is capitalization. Um, and a lot of traders, they have, a, they have a plan, they start trading, but what happens is because they're trading a, a small amount of capital or a relatively small amount of capital, that the professional risk management strategies that you need to employ to be successful over the long term um, you know, if you're making 20 or 30% a year, if that 20 to 30% is on a, a thousand or a $2,000 account, that's not really going to move the needle um, with respect to your financial returns. So what we offer at uh, an FX Career Swap is a, a significant um, a 50K starting account, which you can actually grow up to, to $2 million. Um, we're actually offering a 14-day free trial. I'll post the link in the chat for anyone who's interested in following up or would like to see or learn more about what we're doing at FX Career Swap. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And now let's move into, uh, into the material I want to, to cover with you today. We're going to start by looking at the S&P 500. We're heading in to uh, into the elections and, and we're starting to see more and more rhetoric now as we've had the, um, the D, we had the Democratic Party conference last week. Obviously this is all held virtually due to uh, COVID, but this week we've had the Republican Party. We know who the candidates are now and the election process is really getting underway. There's, a, there's an interesting seasonal factor here um, with respect to the, certainly the S&P 500 and that's that the markets in election years and we, you can see we're going all the way back to the start of the S&P in the lower uh, section here, the 1950s, and more recently since 1995, uh, have a clear pattern. And that's that the, the market has a tendency or high, high probability to top out ahead of the election. So um, we're looking really at all this August, September window, obviously we're coming into the back end of August now, but August, this August, September window um, has, has historically, uh, and certainly over the last um, 70 years and the last 25 years, seen a market top put in place. And this is because of a, you know, the high degree of uncertainty about who the next president will be and how that, and how the, or, or the, how their policies are going to impact, um, impact the markets. And certainly from a regulatory perspective and from a, um, a policy stance and, and, and tax stance, markets have a tendency to want to take some, some exposure off the table ahead of the election. So that's why we tend to get this pattern where the S&P um, tops out uh, into this late, uh, late August, early to mid-September. And so we want to be, we, we certainly, 
We want to be cognizant of that potential because it, it, uh, these, these seasonal patterns have a tendency to, to replicate over time. Certainly, if they don't repeat, they, they certainly rhyme. So we want to pay attention to this potential for a pullback here. And then we've got a couple of, I've got a couple of other charts here. This is the NASDAQ um, showing the 21-day advanced decline breadth. So that means, so what we're looking at here is the amount of stocks advancing versus the amount of stocks declining. For a market to be relatively healthy, we want to see this advanced decline line ascending as price is ascending, okay? So similar to other divergent strategies, you know, using the RSI or MACD or whatever, um, the, the breadth of the market, so this, this 21 day breadth is an important factor to, to watch to, as, a, as a sense check for the overall health of the market advance. And what we're seeing here, that any time we've seen um, major new highs and we're seeing a decline in the advance, uh, advance uh, in, in the breadth of the market, that's tended to uh, foreshadow a, a, certainly a pullback or a period of correction. And you can see just prior, just prior to the, um, the big drop off that we saw in, uh, in the, at the start of this year, that breath was already declining. Now, obviously we've made new highs, but equally what we, pay what we want to pay attention to here is that the breadth of the market is diminishing pretty rapidly. And so again, we start to think about, so now we've got the seasonal factors with respect to um, the pre-election cycle years and how they've tended to top out. And now we can start to see some of the actual infrastructure, uh, looking under the hood of the market, so to speak, we can see that we've got some issues with respect to the breadth. So the actual um, support for the market appears to be deteriorating quite rapidly. And then if we go to the S&P 500, S&P 500 is, the, is down here. And then we've got the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line. So New York's common stocks and the advanced decline deferential. And again, if we look to prior periods when we've seen sell-offs, what we tend to get is the market tops, but we see a decline in breadth. So the breadth of the market is starting to fall away. That means there's, we're not seeing the structural support underneath the market that we need to see to continue to support higher prices. And you can see here, as we've made these new highs this week, we've actually started to see a, a divergence developing. Um, prior, similar divergences have seen certainly pullbacks, if not major corrections in the market. So we've got the, the NASDAQ, which has been the, the runaway uh, cheerleader for the market, um, certainly in the, uh, in, in the recovery period that we're, we're, we've witnessed. Uh, we've got an issue there with the advanced decline breadth and we're seeing the same issue in the S&P and as I mentioned we have this uh, you know the seasonal factor that we want to consider and finally here is the, uh, the S&P index has never been this extended versus its 200 day average so the S&P is is now at a record dispersion from its 200 day moving average going back over, um, over all, all data here. So uh, this is another factor that we want to pay attention to. Remember, in, in, in trading, once, once, you know, we're always in this process of stretching the elastic and then coming back for a, a reversion to the mean. And so we're starting to see a bunch of factors here that potentially support the notion that we can head into a corrective period. I'm not suggesting we're gonna crash here, but certainly there is the potential and scope for a, for a pullback. So that's the S&P. I'm, I'm going to look at the, we're going to cover the charts in a minute and we'll look at the technical, potential technical um, setup. Uh, what I wanted to just quickly cover off here as well, obviously today is, is going to be a pretty pivotal day for the markets. We've got the US Federal Reserve Chairman Powell will open today's virtual Jackson Hole Symposium uh, with a speech at uh, 10 past one GMT. Uh, the market wants to see details on how the Fed intends to ensure the U.S. economy remains on track in the current crisis. Uh, the details, or lack of which, will likely weigh on the dollar or will likely see a dollar move today. Uh, JP Morgan noted that uh, it's unlikely that Powell will not address the Fed's policy review before the, Fed, uh, the September Fed meeting. September 16th is the next Fed meeting. Uh, JP Morgan says average inflation targeting is a baseline expectation for the market at the moment. So it expects the US dollar to come under more pressure if Powell effectively sets the stage 
for a rollout of this framework at the September meeting. And even more pressure will become if you give specifics and assurances that it's moving forward with this, this plan. Clearly, obviously, there's scope for disappointment. If Powell avoids the subject or dismisses it, which would no doubt see the dollar regain some of its recent losses. And what, underpinning this is we've seen a spike in terms of FX option volatility. Um, we're, we're, we're certainly seeing uh, elevated levels. So what we're, what we're getting, what we, what we want to be cognizant of here is that the market has specific expectations to see some, some volatility today. And this, this speech could drive the next phase in terms of the cycle for the next phase in terms of these markets. And we're going to take a look at a bunch of markets uh, in one second to see where we could be heading. Uh, lastly, uh, Morgan Stanley FX positioning tracker here. We're seeing that the largest short is obviously in the US dollar. We're at pretty stretched levels. We're not quite as stretched um, as, we, as we had been, uh, but certainly uh, the FX markets are most long the Euro, uh, most short the US dollar, Kiwi and the Aussie. Within, uh, within the G10 space. So that's just a, some off the chart material that I, I share with, with the guys in my, my trading team and, uh, and hopefully uh, you'll find that stuff useful. So let's take a look at the charts. Um, I wanna start by looking at the, just reviewing some of these weekly charts that we talked about in, uh, in the prior session. So we've got this dollar index and the weekly sitting on this trend line. We had a, a bullish reversal last week after some tails down here. So if Powell, um, disappoints the market today in terms of not being as dovish as the market uh, uh, is anticipating or certainly looking for, um, then we could see this trend line hold and we could see a corrective phase develop in terms of the dollar. Certainly we could be back up testing these prior lows at the 94.50. If, however, Powell goes the other way and is, is uber dovish, um, talking about the framework and suggesting that that's going to, uh, going to be something they're looking at doing in the September um, session, then we certainly would have the potential for, um, for a re certainly a retest of this trend line and um, potentially we break through if, uh, if the market uh, is, is impressed with the, the dovish nature of, of Powell's chat. So really want to be paying attention to, to the close this week in, uh, in this dollar index. And then similarly then with the euro, we're sitting right at the trend line. Again, lastly, we, we close with a bearish reversal pattern. This week's been consolidation. And again, if the dollar is going to hold its trend line, then we'd expect the euro to have a pullback here. And we could certainly be looking back to, uh, to these prior highs at the 115 area um, with the euro. Sterling sitting at its interim trend line, looking to make a break higher here. But again, if Powell, um, you know, if Powell disappoints here, we have the potential for Sterling to see a pretty big sell-off, uh, uh, sorry, a, a reversal. And if it reverses and gets back below this trend line or back to where we opened the week and around this 137, then we have a potential here for a tweezer top in sterling. And, uh, and again, we could see a, a sizable correction develop. If, if Powell um, is, if he doesn't, if, if, he, if, he, if he gives this, this dovish view to the market, then if we see sterling close at or above uh, these prior highs, and that's going to open a move up in sterling for me anyway to, to look for a test of this trend line at 135. Similarly, the Aussie here, again, taking out its trend line resistance at the moment. But again, if, if Powell disappoints the market, there is the potential that we put in a tweezer top here and we could be in for a, for, for a pullback in terms of the Aussie. However, if he doesn't and we get the close out or above current levels, then, uh, then we can see a move up to, to 75 as the next objective in the Aussie. Uh, the Kiwi. Similar story here. Um, the Kiwi, however, I mean, if, if we can close at or above current levels in terms of the Kiwi, we actually broke out of the major uh, descending trend line. And this would qualify as a retest, a snapback to retest the trend line from above. And this could set the stage for, uh, for a move. Certainly, we'd be looking at, uh, at 68 and, and, and then on towards 70 if, uh, if we can hold this pattern. So again, really important for you guys Pay attention to these weekly closes, and uh, so, certainly something that uh, that I keep abreast of. Uh, the S and P. Let's see. So again, we're through uh, the potential broadening top trend line here. But if for whatever reason, if Powell doesn't deliver, and we get a weekly close 
back down through the lows or and and if we could got if we close back through the, the prior high that would be a pretty bearish reversal pattern there and if we think in terms of all the other um information or, or, or the sentiment and flow information i've talked about we need to certainly watch where uh, where the s p closes if we can close at or above current levels then there's scope certainly for a move up to 3718 uh, as the next upside objective so let's take a look now at the daily charts and, uh, and where i see the, the potential um, so let's check in with the dollar index here first so we can see here with the dollar, uh, the dollar index, the, the, the potential um, is for prices to continue to the downside. There's certainly, you can see the similarities here in terms of the setup that we had when we had the last rollover. We've got pretty much exactly the same pattern developing here, uh, certainly with the um, RSI stochastics similarly positioned. And then we've got the psych indicator down here, again, similar setup to when we saw the last roll, rollover. So um, the table is laid here. We had a, an outside reversal to the downside yesterday. We didn't get any follow through. The market um, was unlikely to do that. Uh, people aren't going to necessarily want to be uh, putting on too much exposure prior to this speech. But certainly, if he, uh, if he comes in on the dovish side, then I think we've got to run down to 91.30 next to the downside. However, if, he, uh, if he's not as dovish and the market takes it as more hawkish, then like I say, we could see this pop up into this uh, descending trend line resistance at 94.90. So today's close is going to be an important one for the dollar. Um, we've got the dollar index. That's the broad dollar index. And this is the uh, equal weighted dollar index, the Dow Jones dollar index. So it's the dollar versus the euro, the yen, sterling and the Aussie in equal measures. And you can see the similarities again in terms of the setup here. Again, nice outside reversal yesterday. No follow through um, ahead of this meeting. But... We want to watch to see uh, see where we close today, and certainly if we if, if we hold this bearish reversal pattern, then we've got objectives down to to one uh, one sixteen. If uh, if for whatever reason we reverse and we take out this trend line coming in at one twenty fifty, then I think we'll back up retesting one twenty two in uh, in the coming sessions. Uh, Swissy. So I highlighted this in the, in the chart of the day uh, last week, and we've continued to consolidate here. We, um, we haven't rolled over. And again, if we want a bullish reversal today, then I think there's still scope for this Swissy to get up into this 9360 area. You can see the, the wave cycle that I've highlighted. And we can see a corrective move into this 9360. Um, but again, if, 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 um, if Powell is, is uber dovish, then I think we're gonna be back down retesting lows potentially take those out this time. Uh, Euro, so similar story. Uh, we, we, we didn't quite, I, I, I highlighted yesterday that we, I thought we were going to get a bullish reversal. We didn't quite get it. Um, we closed below the near-term volume waste average price. And so that's why this candle is, is red, although our normal chance was probably green. And we've seen some selling this morning, uh, consolidating ahead of Powell. So again, if the Euro... Um, if the euro takes out these prior lows on the close tonight, then I think we're heading lower uh, in the near term. And I'd see us down testing this 115, the break points here, uh, 114.95. But if Powell, uh, does, if Powell is going to do what the market is, is looking for, then I think we probably get a run at 120 um, before seeing this correction develop uh, at like so. So we get a third test of this trend line. We have some pretty significant divergence there. So if we do get up into this area, I'd certainly be watching again for short positions to, uh, to trade this for a, uh, a correction. Euro yen. This is the trend line I highlighted last week. It looks like we might get a test of this. And if we do, I'll be watching for any bullish reversal patterns in around this uh, 124.60 as an opportunity to do something on the long side, looking for 129.30 in the Euro yen. Sterling. So we're consolidating. Um, this, is the, this is the broader pattern that I'm looking at. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for this 135 test, but what I anticipated was we'd probably get, get a pullback to test this ascending trendline support at 128.14. There is the potential here that we've got a kind of head and shoulders scenario. But again, if it's, it's really, the, the risk is pretty much asymmetric um, going into this, this speech for Powell. If, uh, if he delivers, and, uh, oh, sorry, if he disappoints the market, then I think we see a pullback in Sterling. But if he delivers, then I think we're probably heading straight up to that 
135. But certainly watching that area very closely is it's that major uh, weekly trend line. Uh, a couple of positions I've got on. This is one I highlighted yesterday. I'm looking, uh, I'm long the, the sterling yen here, looking at this ascending triangle pattern, looking for a breakout. Um, and my target is uh, a symmetry swing versus this last advance from these, these prior lows here. So I'm looking at this 145 area. We've also got um, this ascending trend line. Let's just tidy this up a bit. So you can see we've got this trend channel we're in. So if we do break out and we, and we, and we get some follow through to the upside, certainly I can see us up to this 145 area, the, uh, the pre-pandemic break point, 144.94. So um, there's decent risk reward on this. If we fail, if, if, if we don't get, a, you know, if we can't sustain the upside here, then I think uh, we'll be back down testing this ascending trend line support 136.50 before we try and make uh, another move higher. Sterling Kiwi is another one I'm watching. Um, uh, I'm bullish the Sterling Kiwi. We held a uh, big trend line support here. And I'm looking for a corrective move now to, uh, to look at longs in terms of the Sterling Kiwi. We'll see uh, how the pattern plays out. Don't have a uh, don't have a signal just yet. Aussie. So this is the ending diagonal pattern that I talked about. We've got a potential here for a head and shoulder scenario as well. So this being left shoulder, head, right shoulder. But if uh, if you know if if Powell comes in uber dovish, I think uh, I think we're back up looking for it, looking at this seventy three sixteen area, and uh, and we see this this is the next potential reversal point for the Aussie uh, to get a pullback and a correction. Remember the Aussie, these, these commodity currencies are, are heavily correlated to risks. So this, uh, if we're gonna see this potential pullback in the S&P and the equity markets, that would underpin this, the, the potential for a correction in the Aussie. So um, if we don't roll over from current levels, certainly wanna watch 73.10 area for bearish reversal patterns in terms of the Aussie. The Aussie Yen is another position I've got on. Similar story to uh, the, uh, the Sterling Kiwi, looking for a break here of this ascending triangle. Um, we've been in this fight, we, we, we can define a five-way pattern here and uh, with it, thinking about the, uh, the rule of alternation in terms of Elliott wave cycles, where we get a quick sharp pullback in the one, two, uh, the three, four tends to be a, a protracted, uh, sorry, the fourth wave tends to be a protracted affair and, uh, and that's what we've got here, but we've certainly got uh, momentum set up with the potential for a breakout here. And we've got a couple of measures for, uh, for our target. So the equality objective versus the fourth wave low. And then we've also got, um, if, the, if the triangle is gonna break to the upside, we can use this tool to give us our target area. So the equality objective gets us up into the 80 area and the triangle would put us up into 80, 90. So I've got to take, I've got to take profit on that at, uh, at 80, 50. And, uh, and we'll just see how that one plays, plays out. But uh, certainly the technical pattern is, uh, is solid. Kiwi. Uh, yeah, the Kiwi has, uh, has got, the, got the potential here. Again, it's gonna depend how we close uh, this week, but certainly we could see the uh, the potential for another run at this ascending trend line um, resistance. If uh, you know, if, if Powell does come in on the dovish side, but again, I'd be I'd be watching this 67.80 area. We've got these prior highs, 67.55. So I think from here we could we could see a corrective move, and um, and it, you know it could set up a, a broadening pattern like so. So we get up here. And then if, if the equity markets are going, to, are going to pull back, then we could be back down here. But again, that would, uh, that would just be a setup on the bullish side for, uh, for higher prices um, later on. So got to pay attention to, uh, to these, these equity markets. So let's just finish up today by having a quick look at these. So you can see we've taken out the prior highs, but we've got a bit of divergence developing now. And, um, and again, it's really going to be about these, the close today. If, if it, you know, it's all, it's all about, <laughs> uh, it's all about power really in this speech, because if we got an outside reversal today, then, uh, then we could be set for a, a pullback. I mean, as always, you know, when I'm looking at targets, initial targets, we have symmetry swing, uh, support 3188. Uh, so, I mean, we could have a, a, a pull, you know, depending upon how this goes today, we could get this pullback. Um, 
or if we don't, then, um, you know, and the markets continue to, to trade higher than the target in terms of the next measured move is up here at 37.26. Uh, so we'll, keep, we'll be watching how, uh, how we close out today. Similar story in the NASDAQ. We're testing this ascending trend line resistance. We're up at the 161 extension of that, uh, of that pandemic uh, crash. So, you know, again, if bearish reversal patterns here and, um, and we, could be, uh, we could be looking for a pullback certainly into this uh, 12,000 area, uh, sorry, 11,200, which is the ascending trend line support. Um, and then finally, we're just checking with gold. Gold, I think, is we, we've got one or two scenarios here. We're either going to do a complex correction and pretty much come back into retest highs before getting a pullback, or if we hold these current these current highs, then I'm still looking at this 1823 area uh, as a setup. But um, either way, I think we're you know we're, I still think we can see higher prices in gold. But I think we're in this corrective phase now. And if we look at the the pullback we have here and the sharp nature of it, again thinking about that idea of alternation it's easy to understand that this might be more of a complex pattern um, in terms of this being the, the potential um, fourth wave consolidation before we get that fifth wave spike. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, me for, for now. Again, it's really, the focus really needs to be on the, the closes tonight and see how the market digests Powell's speech. And then certainly want to pay attention to those weekly closes as we could get some, uh, some great setups developing. So, uh, are there any questions? If you can raise your hand and I can unmute your mic or you can type them in the chat box if there's a chart you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered. Equally, if you don't have a question, if you could type an N in the chat box, then I'll know that, uh, that everyone's on board and I can, uh, I can wrap this session up here. Okay, good stuff. Well, thanks for your time today. I hope you found this, uh, this useful and, uh, and I'll see you guys same time, same place next week. Thanks very much.